It's time for Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Realty Executives Preferred Advisors. Good Sunday morning to you. This is Carrie Brown, broker owner of Realty Executives Preferred Advisors, and you're listening to Real Estate 101. Today I'm here with Susan Failer, and she is with the American Red Cross. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm good. So we're going to talk about the need for blood. There is constantly a need for blood, and we are very fortunate that we have a lot of supporters in Topeka, and we have several blood drives coming up that people can take advantage of and come in and help save some lives. Speaking of which, ours is actually coming up, and uh, we will be doing, um, ours has to be a by appointment only. We're working with Becker and Lawson, Pam Lawson, Bob Lawson's office, and ours, which is Realty Executives. Of course, we're in the same building. And I want to say ours is May 7th. That is correct. Yours is May 7th from 10 to 4. And that is what we call an express drive, which means we have two beds. And we will have 21 appointment slots available. And people can come in and make a, well, or make their appointments every 15 minutes. We can see a donor. So this all came about as far as setting up a blood drive because we were talking about it at a meeting one day and I, and Blue Cro- our American Red Cross calls a lot because I have a rare blood type. And so it was like, you got to come to me because I know I'm going to pass out. <laughs> it's what I do. I think that I'm good. I'm like, I've got this. And then I stand up and then it's all out. It's just lights out. That happens a lot, unfortunately, but uh, what I've learned about myself is if I have eaten within three hours of donating blood, then I'm I'm really good, and you just want to make sure you eat before you come and that you've been drinking a lot of water and gotten some good rest because it does kind of make you a little woozy sometimes, and of course, after you donate, you go over to the canteen and you get refreshments, little snacks. So we try to help you recuperate there. And also, we don't want you to leave just because of that very reason. We'll kind of keep you there 10 or 15 minutes just to make sure everything's good before we let you go. It's amazing. That's definitely information that I should I should heed and I should do this. Um, my son just recently gave blood and he's in high school, which we're going to talk about how important that is. Mm-hmm. Um, he thought it was hilarious. He doesn't listen to the radio show, so I can say this, um, that I pass out. Or I get close to passing out, and I and I know it's important because my my blood type is pretty rare mm-hmm. to d- to do it. So I he was like, "Oh yeah, mom, I'm not going to pass out." He did. <laughs> so. Again, that happens a lot too <laughs> at high schools as well because they're just not used to that. But when you donate blood, we take a pint of your blood, and of course, the blood is made up of three different components, if you will. We have the red blood cells, the plasma, and platelets. And they all have a very important part for our bodies. So your body has about 10 pints in it. And so when we take one, of course, and you have the nine, you can donate every 56 days. Wow. So it takes a little less than that for it to actually build back up. But that's why we ask you to drink a lot of water because that's the best way to to get that blood built back up. See, my goal here is to beat this. I am going to do this. (laughs) I am going to stay completely conscious, and it is not going to phase me a bit. Well, that's that's a great goal to have. And then once you conquer that, then <laughs> every, you, 56, every days. 56 days, we'll see you. So, <laughs> And usually what my problem is, is ordinarily I am low on iron. So I start eating more kale and red meat and those types of things that will build that up. But one thing I found out is if you drink tea... And even coffee, what that does is that zaps your iron. Oh. So you don't have as much of it that's able to let you pass so you can actually donate. Wow. Yeah, we were discussing prior to, to getting on the show that when I was younger, I was told that I couldn't donate blood. And it was actually a very beneficial thing because by finding out I couldn't, um, it was because I was so vitamin deficient. You yeah. know, when you think you're in your 20s, you're running around, you might be eating a lot of fast food. I was... I was super, super skinny because, you know, that's just how you are in your 20s. (laughs) Right. And um, and then it helped me to figure out that I should be taking it. And all of a sudden I felt so much better. So now they'll take my blood because I take vitamins. And they say that, too, with iron a lot is if you are low in iron or even really high in iron, a lot of times you get lethargic and Mm -hmm. also 
Yes, and you need to just remember that the blood that we're taking from you, we want to be healthy because we're giving it to people who are in need, who really need that blood. So a lot of times people get upset when they get deferred, but you got to remember the patient on the other side too. Yeah, and even then you get to learn why. And so a lot of times it's definitely stuff that could be fixed. Yes. So, And one thing I want to mention talking about the patients is we have a blood donor app that you can download if you're 17 years old and above. And you can make your appointments for blood drives through that app, as well as you can track your blood. So it'll say now it's being tested, now it's being stored, but you'll also get notified if your blood is given to someone to help save their lives. So yes, and it's very interesting when I go to blood drives, I like to talk to people about that. And many times they'll say, oh, yeah, I just got notified that my blood was used as well. So it's kind of fun to sit around and talk about that and see so you where get your to blood's feel going. like you're making a difference yeah. and you're seeing it firsthand. That's awesome. So how often do people need blood in the U.S.? I know that there's, you know, these stats. So what is that time frame? Well, it's, it's very interesting because since I've um, taken on this job, I have learned so much more. Kind of makes me feel like I really didn't know anything to begin with. But I've learned that sometimes people get blood transfusions three, four times a week. And I had no idea that it happened that often. And, of course, then if people are in accidents and they need blood for that and chemo and leukemia, all all different types of reasons. And, of course, blood can't be man-made. So the only way to get blood to someone is by all these wonderful people volunteering to share an hour of their lives to donate blood and you can save up to three lives with one donation so it's really a pretty awesome feeling when you get that email or a text that says hey your blood just went to somebody to help them out and the other thing is that every two seconds somebody in the united states needs blood so it's a lot more often than what we actually realize wow and there you know you take the sheer volume of people right As a matter of fact, if I can throw this in, about 38% of the U.S. population is eligible to donate blood, but less than 10% actually do. So if you have those rare blood types and you've donated in the past, that's why you get phone calls from us or emails trying to encourage you to donate again because we just are in constant need of that because we have so many people in the U.S. that don't donate. And then when you have all these crazy weather situations that are knocking out power lines and causing people to not be able to go out and donate, that also hurts us too. Um, There, I think it was between January and February alone, more than 600 blood drives had gotten canceled because of weather issues. And so honestly, after a while, we just kind of quit counting because it just got the numbers were just crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. And also, of course, the illness that we had going around with the flu. That certainly didn't help. That knocked out a lot of people, right? So we know that every two seconds someone needs blood. And would you ever say that you guys get caught up? You like you have an overabundance? No. Is that even even no. a possibility? No, not really. Twenty one percent of our blood comes from students, and so when they're not in school, of course, automatically our collection numbers drop off. So summertime, and that's also when a lot of people are going to weddings and vacations, and so they're busy, and people just don't stop to think about it. I like to ask people, why is it that you came in to donate blood, or why do you do this on a regular basis? And most of the time, it's because somebody in their family or they know somebody who needed blood, and so it just resonates with them, and they just are more apt to make that appointment to to actually donate. It makes sense. I mean, for a lot of people, they're probably like me. It makes you kind of squeamish. Right. Um, But at the same time, you want to help. So I think it's great that that app is there. So you get to see in real time, you know, you made a difference. Yes, it definitely makes you feel good. And the other thing is it's kind of neat on there is that it'll tell you how many pints of blood you've donated over the years, as well as how many lives you had the potential to save. So that's pretty neat. And also a lot of times people will say, well, gosh, I don't even know what my blood type is. Well, after you come and donate blood, you will be notified of what your blood type is. You get a nice little card that you can put in your wallet. And, and, you know, if you're ever in an accident, that would be pretty useful. Yes, definitely. And a lot of people ask why O-negative blood is in such demand. 
Well, it doesn't matter what your blood type is. Anybody can receive O negative blood. So if somebody goes into the hospital and needs blood, they don't know what their blood type is. What are they going to do? They're going to grab that O negative blood. So we thank you to all those O negs that come in on a regular basis and donate. I'm A positive, and people always say, oh, they don't need that A positive. But actually, my blood has been used, my A pos has been used the past four times that I have donated. So it is needed. I'm AB positive. Very rare. Nice to meet (laughs) you. It's funny when I go through and I look at the appointments and it shows their blood type, I go, oh, look, we've got an AB negative or an AB positive because we don't see a lot of those. So definitely need those folks coming in as well. Absolutely. So let's talk about schools. You were talking about kids. Right now, are you talking about college students or are you talking about high school kids that you see the most from? Well, we have a lot of high schools that have donation that have blood drives for donations, as well as college. Um, in the summertime, we tend to have more high school students that like to try to host a blood drive. And we have a program called Leaders Save Lives, where high school and college students can host a blood drive in their community and they will have a goal of 25 pints. They meet that goal. They receive a $50 gift card, as well as their name is put into a drawing for a $1,000 scholarship. So that's one way we try to get the students to come back to us because we know in the summer and again around the holidays, they don't come back in. And another new program that we are just now unveiling is for any organization or club, church, 4-H, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts that are into fundraising, which most of them are, they can host a high school club program with a goal of 30 pints to collect. And if they collect that, they would get $10 credit per pint collected. So even if their goal is 30, but they collect 40, they'll get $400. And what we would have them do is go ahead and order their band equipment or uniforms, whatever they're needing, and then we will call that third party and actually make that payment for them. So there's incentive, too. Yes. We need to make sure that we get our youth into donating and become a regular pastime for them, I guess, just because... Um, A lot of people that grew up donating blood and their families did it a lot have now passed on. And this is something that has not necessarily been passed down to the younger generation. So, yes, we're definitely trying to make sure that those students are continuing to give. And you could just be like us around our house. We make wagers (laughs) on whether or not they're going to still be standing or not. Uh (laughs) We definitely should eat before we go. I think That's probably where the problem comes in. And I know you're supposed to drink Mm -hmm. quite a bit also. Yes. Drinking the water just helps keep it flowing. And sometimes people say, well, they have a hard time getting getting me. Well, in that case, if you would drink Gatorade or Powerade, then that kind of plumps you up a little bit. And that Mm -hmm. also helps as well. And it really doesn't hurt. Mm -mm. It's just a quick little stick at first. And normally when the needle comes out, I don't even feel that. Mm -mm. No. And, you know, if you know you're squeamish at all, just don't watch. Yeah, I turn my head away, and I've been doing this. I can watch other people get stuck, but not myself. That's not my favorite thing to watch. My daughter wants to go into the medical field, and she's the only person in the family that could pull that off because we can't watch anybody else do it, (laughs) and we can't watch ourselves do it. There you go. There you go. (laughs) But if you know, you know. Well, yeah, you just look away. It's easy enough. It was really interesting. One time I had a blood drive at Washburn, actually, Washburn University, And there were a bunch of kids that were in there volunteering. And this one girl was holding this other girl's hand who was on the bed. And she had her back to her friend. She was trying to be there, you know, to help her out. And I just laughed. I said, why are you turned away? She says, oh, I can't stand. I can't stand looking at the needle or the blood or anything. But I thought, well, that was sweet that she at least was there for her friend, even (laughs) though she had her back to her. And then it was funny. A little bit later, I look over at the canteen and this girl who hadn't even donated blood was laying down because she was getting a little. (laughs) So, you know, we need everybody. We need those that can donate. We need those that can't to help and volunteer and just recruit other people. So need everybody. And joking about it, it is truly a joke. But for us, it's still so important. You know, it's not, there's nothing to be ashamed of if you get squeamish. At the end of the day, you save lives. Exactly. Exactly. So don't let that be a deterrent. 
I mean, right. I'm not. I am determined to beat this. <laughs> exactly. There. That's your goal for what May seventh. We'll see. I'll have to check back with you and make sure that you yeah. you stayed upright. <laughs> if you want to point and laugh, I I think I donated three or four. So <laughs> yeah. there you go. Well, and I should mention too, sixteen year olds are allowed to donate as long as they have written cons- well consent forms from us signed. So you can find those online if you. Or you can go by the uh, different businesses that are hosting the blood drives, and they will usually have them as well. How do you make appointments to donate blood? Well, you can go to www.redcrossblood.org. You can type in your zip code, and then all of the blood drives within a certain radius that you set will show up, and you can make an appointment that way. And like we mentioned, on May 7th, we'll need to have people make appointments for that blood drive because it's two beds. It's very, very well run, and you have literally somebody on the bed every 15 minutes. For the people out there that can't give blood, what are the stipulations? Why can't they? There are a variety of reasons why someone would be deferred. If you have had a piercing or a tattoo within the past year, and it was not done in a licensed facility, then you will be deferred for a year. Um, Another one is if you've been on an antibiotic. As long as you finished that last antibiotic the day before the blood drive, then you'll be able to donate. So those are mainly the ones that pop up the most. Oftentimes, if you don't make the 12.5 level for your iron, then you will not be able to donate People often say, well, I've had cancer, I can't donate. Well, actually, if they've been cancer-free and have not had any kind of treatments in the past year, then they can donate blood. If it was a blood-related type cancer, then they will not be able to, and they'll get deferred. But those are the main ones we see. A lot of people also will ask about diabetes or if they're on high blood pressure or some of those different types of meds. And many of those you can still donate, but we have an 800 number that I can provide you that will, that you can call and double check just to make sure before you actually get there. What is the number to, that they can call to confirm whether or not they can give blood or not? If you want to check different types of medicines or if you have gone overseas or lived overseas, just because you've gone overseas does not mean you're automatically going to get deferred. It depends on which countries you went to. And if you've lived there, it depends on how long and what period of time. So that number that you would want to call is 866-236-3276. You guys have a, a really neat machine. It's called a Power Red. What is that? Power Red machine. We love these. You have to meet certain criteria to be able to donate on this machine. And the blood types need to be A negative. B negative, O negative, or O positive. And males need to be 5 foot 1, 130 pounds. Females need to be 5 foot 5, 150 pounds. And when you go on to donate, it sets up pretty much the same way. Uh, The needle's a little smaller, and you can only donate on this once every 112 days because what it does is when your blood is taken out, it will filter it so that you have the red blood cells in one bag plasma and platelets are in another. It'll give you back your plasma and platelets and just keep the red blood cells. Now, the reason for doing that is because the turnaround time to be able to use that blood is only about two to three days, whereas with whole blood, it takes about a week for it to go through all the different testing and everything. The other thing about that is it can save up to 60 babies' lives because you figure they just need the red blood cells because it's got the oxygen in it. And so they only need a teaspoon, tablespoon, whatever, of blood. So therefore, that's the blood that they're given, and you can save that many lives. That's pretty amazing. I feel kind of like they discriminate against me because I'm certainly not five foot five, and I don't have the right blood type. This is true. So <laughs> it's that height and over, or that height? It's that height and over. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that weight and over as well. Gotcha. What is Rapid Pass? Rapid Pass is kind of like when you go to Disney World and they have their little Rapid Pass. can't remember what it's called exactly. But what you do is the day of the blood drive that you're going to be donating, you go to redcrossblood.org slash rapid pass. And the pre-reading that you need to do before you can donate, when you actually get to the blood drive, you can do from your cell phone or 
from the computer, as well as the questions that they will ask you in a health history, you can answer those before you even get there. And you can save up to 15 minutes at your appointment by filling all that stuff out before you get there. And then it'll give you a barcode when you're done. And when you get into health history, they'll just scan it and then you can move right on. So we'll just check your vitals. Skip through all the stuff that you don't want to do right there. All That's the red awesome. tape. And that it's also very helpful because it keeps us on schedule because, of course, sometimes people read slower than others and people have more, oh, well, gosh, yes, I did live there. And then they start doing more checking into things. And so, it yes, it can definitely help help move things along. So we like to travel a lot. Where would we go to make sure that the places that we've traveled don't interfere with giving blood? Well, again, you can call our donor support line, which is 866-236-3276, as well as if you fill out Rapid Pass, it'll pop up the questions about where you have been, and it'll also be able to defer you from there as well. May 7th, we are doing our blood drive, and we have spots for 21 people total. Once that's filled, they can't take on anybody else. So obviously, we would love for you guys to still continue to give blood regardless of where you go. So where else are they um, donating blood around Topeka or or in the the vicinity so that they know? There are several blood drives scheduled for May. And for instance, May 4th will be at Laird Nuller Ford from 9 to 4. Of course, then we have Realty Executives on May 7th from 10 to 4. May 17th is going to be at the Holiday Building, and that is going to be the Topeka Battle of the Badges, which is kind of a fun drive because when you donate, when you show up to donate, you will get to vote for your favorite badged officers, if it's fire department or police, and then there's a traveling trophy, so we'll see who gets to win that and take that with them. But that, again, is May 17th from 9 to 3, Then we also have a blood drive May 23rd at Kansas Neurological Institute from 930 to 230. And that is at 3107 Southwest 21st Street in the Pleasant View building. And it's kind of hard to find that, but we have signs up. So just keep looking around, see if you can find us, because we'd love to see more people come in, donate, or even give us a call if they're interested in trying to organize blood drives for their school or a club, organization, as well as a business. So again, if your child is 16 years of age, or, well, at 16 years of age, they can donate as long as the parent has given them permission. That is correct. So feel free to take them with you. It'd be great for them to learn at a young age to get involved. Right, as well as donating together, saving lives together. I like to tell students, younger people that I give presentations to, I say, well, since heroes are really big right now, superheroes, I say, okay, well, what makes a superhero so super? What is it that they're doing? Well, they're helping people. And I say, exactly. That's why I like to say that people who donate blood are also superheroes because they, too, are donating blood to help people. So it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling, especially when you get that notification that your blood was used. makes you just really feel good that you've recycled yourself. The quick and skinny, how many times can a person donate in a year? If you donate whole blood, you can donate every 56 days. And we do have several blood drives in the area where they are set up about every other month. So you can donate six times a year. If you donate on the Power Red machine, because we're taking a little bit more red blood cells from you, you can only donate once every 112 days. So that's about every other or every four months then. So it's every 112 days, three times a year. I think a really important stat to remember is that 38% of people are eligible to give blood, but 10% do. So don't think someone else is doing it. Go ahead, go in and do it. I joke about passing out, but I think that is my fault. I psych (laughs) myself out. It really does not hurt. I don't think it hurts at all. And I'm, I'm a little bit of a wimp. (laughs) Um, it's, you know, it's a quick stick. It's not a big deal. And, um, and you're saving a life. Right. And interestingly enough, you, we ask you to allow us about an hour to be at the blood drive, but the actual time it takes to donate the blood itself 
is only usually from four minutes to eight minutes. Usually everybody is finished. So that's a very short amount of time given, you know, the whole hour that you're there. So it really doesn't take as long as as what people think. And you're right. We need people to come in and start donating more regularly. And the thing is, if you ever need blood, you'll be super glad that somebody had come in and done that or if anybody in your family does. One more time, if you would give them your information on how to get it onto the website so that they can donate blood. Certainly. It's www.redcrossblood.org. And if you wanted to fill out Rapid Pass the day of the blood drive to help save up to 15 minutes at your appointment, that's redcrossblood.org slash rapid pass. And if you have any questions about the type of medications that you're on or other travel that might get you deferred, the phone number that you can call is 866 236 3276. And if you're interested in trying to host a blood drive for your business or church or an organization, you can certainly give me a holler. And again, my name is Susan Failer. My number is 316-554-4807. Again, it's 316-554-4807. And you can also follow them on Facebook at facebook.com slash Red Cross Blood. Yes. And if you're looking to buy or sell, be sure and give us a call at 785-213-5188. You can check out our website. You can go to two different ones. They both lead to the same place. PreferredAdvisorsTeam.com and NEKansasHomes.com. We're on 4MLSs, so you can check out everything from the west side of Missouri, Nebraska border, all the way out to Junction City and down to Emporia, a little bit beyond. So kind of a one-stop shop. Again, be sure and think about us if you're looking to buy or sell this market. We are definitely low on listings. So if you've thought about selling, statistically speaking, last year, sellers earned 14% more than prior years. So now is a good time. Again, give us a call, 785-213-5188. This is Stephen Parkin at Invista Credit Union. Purchasing a home is one of the most exciting and important decisions someone can make. Let me tell you why Invista is the best choice for financing your new home purchase. First, quick pre-approval process. Our fast decision-making gives you the power to act quickly and make an offer on your dream home. Second, local servicing. We service your mortgage in-house. You won't get a long-distance runaround, but a committed professional whose only job is to help you. Third, experienced team. We are dedicated to simplifying the process and educating you through the home buying process. Come by in Vista. It's okay to dream. In fact, it's encouraged. We are your home buying partner. Give us a call at 785 228 0149. Southwest Topeka has a good neighbor. State Farm Agent Jim Garrison, now at 29th and Urish. If your current insurance situation has you going around in circles, get off the roundabout and stop in and meet Jim and his wonderfully efficient staff. Let Jim Garrison give you a quote and make the Garrison comparison. He's confident that with State Farm's competitive rates, the right coverage, and his unmatched service, you'll want to make him your new insurance agent. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, and Jim Garrison is there for you. Northeast of the roundabout at 29th and Urish. Thank you for listening to Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Realty Executives Preferred Advisors. Tune in again next Sunday at 11 o'clock for Real Estate 101.